All right, in this video, I want to show you how you can create somewhat of a, a dual layer effect here where we have an image and it appears kind of sort of where, you know, we have two pieces of uh, wallpaper. We have this top one here and then we have this little shadow where it appears that we have the identical image beneath it. And here it is over on my custom live wallpaper. Now we can use whatever image we want and the main thing here is to bear in mind a few things and that is we're actually going to use the image twice as I have over here in Affinity Designer. I'm going to be doing the same thing in KOWP. And then I have this curve that I've created and that curve is this shadow that you see right here. Now I used Affinity Designer and if you've been following my tutorials for the past, I don't know, two years or so, I have used Affinity Designer in quite a few of my setups. So here it is again. I couldn't achieve the shadow effect that I wanted using just KOWP, so that is why I resorted to Affinity Designer for this. Now the image I'm using here is over at Pixabay, so some keywords there if you want to get that same image. As a matter of fact, in my custom shared folder, if you look for the gradients, I actually have that image there as well as the Affinity Designer template and the clip shadow. This is the thing that we're going to be using in KOWP to actually give that shadow effect. Doesn't look too fancy, but when you actually apply it to your custom live wallpaper, it does give that somewhat of a three-dimensional dual layered effect, in my opinion. So this KOWP preset is in my free wallpapers folder. Look for dual layered image. I guess that's what I'll name it. And sorry about the background noise. Uh, my puppy's right here laying right beneath my feet, chewing on a toy, sorry. But anyway, here we go. So we have uh, the back blur, basically it's that image. And in this preset, I do have a global and that global is going to be whatever image you want to use. Now back over in the items, this back blur, that is that global image. I've adjusted the width of that image so that it fits. And you can see that one moving there in the background. And if you're using this particular image right around 2500 fits on my Galaxy Note 8, I don't have any blur applied to it, but if I apply just a little bit of blur, that will change the effect a little bit. You can experiment with dimming that image as well. Other things to note is that I did adjust the position so that I could get the part of the image that I wanted on the screen. And then obviously when we come back here in a moment and add the image again, we wanna make sure these line up. Or maybe, you know, if you do wanna slightly stagger them a little bit to give somewhat more of a three-dimensional, slightly different effect, have at it. The shadow that you see here is that shadow PNG image that I showed you in my custom shared folder. I adjusted the width so that it fits the screen. As you can see here, that is uh, making it smaller. So somewhere around 175 works good on my device. And then I adjusted the position such that in a minute, you know, if I slide this over to the right, you can see more of that black. And maybe you like that. And the reason why you see it hiding is because I do have this shadow. Let's look and see where this shadow is layered. I have it behind the clip and behind the front clip. And let me take this clip and let me slide this uh, beneath the front clip. And if I do that, the front clip is this entire image that you see here. This is different than the back image, but essentially it's a duplicate. Same size, same position because I did want to keep them side by side. But if I take this clip that I have here and I slide this to where I'm going to clip the next module, that's what's allowing the back blur, this image here, to come through, as well as that shadow. So if I come to that clip, it's just a rectangle, whatever width you want to put on it. If I go over to FX and I take off this clip next module, and its paint is set to white. So we can't see that because now I have this clip behind the front clip, but if I slide this, all you're going to see is a white rectangle. So if I slide that white rectangle behind the front clip, go back to the clip rectangle, go to FX and clip next module, that's what clips this front image that we have here, which exposes the shadow and it also exposes that back blur. And by all means, mess around with the back blur image if you want to, you know, dim the front clip, whatever you want to do there. And also in the shadow, though I don't have anything applied to it in terms of opacity, I have it 100% opaque. I don't have a blur applied to it, but you could definitely apply one and we could dim it up as well just to show you some slightly different effects. Notice as I do adjust these, if I save this, go back to the home screen, you can see that we still do have somewhat of a, a dual layered effect there. I like mine to be a little more subtle, so I'm going to uh, bump that blur back on down and take the dim off, save that and apply it. And uh, yeah, there you have it, um, a dual layered image. 
somewhat of a 3D effect. Pick up the preset, pick up those files. If you're using Affinity Designer, open that template up and uh, have some fun with it. Now, if you're curious how I made the shadow, what I did, if you're familiar with Affinity Designer, I took a rectangle and then I subtracted an oval from it. And that new curve that I had, I applied a, I believe, a radial gradient with some uh, Gaussian blur until I got the effect that I wanted. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.